What's up, everybody? As of this recording, it is December 28th, 2022. And I'm here to talk about, this episode is gonna be about my journey with a daily morning ice bath every day in December. Now, of course, I have a few days left, but earlier this month, on December 1st, I decided that I was gonna get into the ice bath every single morning in December, and I want to talk about why I did that and also what I've learned and the journey that I've gone through. And it's not going to be what you think. The reason's not going to be what you think, and um, the message here is not going to be what you think, but I think this is going to be a great uh, thought experiment and mindset little work for us to go through together as we head into a new year and a challenge that I have for all of you as we head into 2023. So before I get into all of that, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. For my 40th birthday, which was in August, I wanted a sauna. Um, because I mean, who doesn't want a sauna? I don't really need to go into the reason, all of the reasons for that. There, there are a ton of health benefits, and but most of all, to me, it's just a sauna is relaxing. It's quiet. It's somewhere I can go as a mom of three little boys and go be by myself. And it gets cold here in the winters and go warm up and all of that. So for my 40th birthday, I got myself a sauna. We built it. It's beautiful. It's this like two person barrel sauna that's in our backyard. And we live in the Pacific Northwest. So we have the beautiful trees and everything. And it's just this serene, beautiful setting. Well, I, I was so stoked on it and I started using it immediately. I was using it all the time. I sent a picture of the sauna to my friend, Katie Henniger of Rogue Fitness. And she said, you know what you need? You need one of these. And she sent a picture of this ice barrel that they sell on the Rogue website back to me. Now I had no interest in the ice barrel whatsoever. I've done ice baths in the past. Um, I know there are some health benefits and, and potentially some benefits for recovery and things like that. Um, but I had no interest. That is not, was not part of what I was trying to do here. Uh, but Julian really wanted the ice barrel because he had been listening to some podcasts and doing some research about the benefits of ice baths. And he really was interested in doing the um, contrast, like getting into the cold and then getting into the sauna or vice versa. So long story short, she sends us the ice barrel uh, and it arrives at our house and it's set up and Julian starts doing it and he has our staff doing it. And I had done it with them like twice before December, maybe, maybe even only once. Here's the thing. I hate being cold. I hate it so much. Um, I, I'm the type of person that doesn't even wear jeans in the wintertime. Like I only wear sweats pretty much. I mean, you guys probably see it on my posts and stuff like that because jeans aren't warm enough for my legs. And we don't even live somewhere that's that cold. I mean, there are definitely days that it gets cold, but like today, for example, it's like high thirties, low forties. And I know many of you guys live places where it's much colder. I hate being cold. I specifically hate cold water. And so why in the world would I end up doing this every single day for the entire month of December? How did this happen? So on December, first or maybe uh, maybe the day a few days before I had gotten in the ice bath and I hated it so much that I had this light bulb moment for me personally when I recognize that I hate something as much as I hated getting in that ice bath I know that it's something that I need to overcome and I need to do it so on December 1st I got in in the evening by myself and Julian was like oh you're gonna do the ice bath cool you know because he had been doing it all the time I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do it. And then I don't know if it was when I was in there or I had gotten into the sauna afterward or whatever. I decided sometime in that moment, in that window, I'm going to, I'm going to do this every single day and I'm going to do it in the morning. Why I chose the morning. I chose the morning because I also hate mornings. <laughs> uh, I'm not a morning person. Um, I am the type of person that's a little cranky when I wake up, even if, uh, and it's been years since I've gotten like quality sleep consistently, but like I need a moment to 
have my coffee and to like wake up. I don't wake up with a ton of energy. I'm not that person. I never have been that person. Even before kids, I wasn't that person. And, um, you know, Julian had suggested before this, like, Hey, like you should join me in the mornings with the sauna. And I'm like, I'm too busy in the morning. It's already hard enough for me to get out of the house in the morning. Like I can't add another thing. So I chose the morning. So I've now chosen two things that I know the combination is going to be real tough again for the sole reason that I didn't want to do it. I know how much growth there is when you recognize something that you don't want to do and force yourself to do it. I've had these experiences in the past. When I was training um, for competition, there were certain types of training that made me feel this way. One of them was the running workouts that we would do at the track. I was bad at it. I didn't like it. Um, it was extremely uncomfortable. There was no joy in it for me whatsoever. So I knew I needed to stick with it. The other thing was swimming practice because again, like I'm not a water person um, and I was really bad at it and it was uncomfortable for me and I felt really awkward doing it. So I knew I needed to stick with it. Not just because I needed to do it for competition, but because this was something that I needed to overcome. So I chose the morning cause I knew it would make it worse. Um, and then a couple other things I want to go through the journey of like what happened through the 30 days because there was like so many different moments of clarity and so many different ways that I started to change the way that I thought about it. And I think this isn't about the ice bath as you guys are listening to this, hopefully you've picked up on this by now, but all of us have these things where we recognize this. And for you, it might be fitness for somebody else. It might be nutrition for somebody else. It might be um, overcome, you know, spending too much time on your phone or whatever that might be. And, and there are definitely still some things in my life that I could apply this mindset to, but for the month of December, it was, it was the ice and, and putting myself in an uncomfortable position. A couple other things. I didn't try to get anybody else to do it with me on December 1st, when I came out of the ice before, um, before going into the first morning, I told Julian that I was going to do it. I was like, I'm going to get in the ice every single day in December. And he was like, uh, what? Okay. And I said, yeah, I'm going to do it in the morning before I have breakfast, before I have coffee, everything. Um, I'm just, I, I just, I hate it so much. I need to overcome it. And he was kind of like, okay. I did not ask him to do it with me. I did not reach out to people on our staff and say, Hey, you guys got to do this with me. Like, let's do it after work or anything. This was my thing. If somebody wanted to join me, I would not have tried to stop them. If Julian was like, I'll do it with you. I of course wouldn't have tried to stop him, but I was going to put no weight or stock into needing somebody else to show up to do it with me. And I wasn't going to wait for somebody else ever to do it with me. This was, I was committed to doing it. It was 100% for myself. Um, I did not post about it on my social media and you guys know that I post everything, not everything, but, uh, but stuff like this, where it's like interesting, it's, it would be fun to follow along. I could have done a daily post. It could have gotten a lot of traction, all this stuff. But as soon as someone like me, if I would have posted it on social media, I know now that the only reason that I'm doing it is because people are following along and they expect it. So I told our staff a few days into it, but not even right away. Um, and I didn't make, I mean, I made a big deal about it in the fact of how, sh how crappy it had been so far, but I didn't make a big deal about it in that I needed them to encourage me to do it. This was, I'm going to be accountable to myself. Even if nobody else cares, even if nobody else knows I'm going to show up and I'm going to do this. Now I gave myself a couple of rules heading into this. Um, and I used some of the tools that we encourage our members to use, um, things like habit stacking. So I knew that I needed to immediately come downstairs in the morning and go right into the ice bath. If I said, I'm going to do it after breakfast, there are way too many things that could happen between making breakfast, dealing with the kids, feeding them, you know, a text message that I might get from a staff member or something. There are way too many obstacles that could come up. I need to come downstairs and immediately get in. Now there, there was always the, not always, but I would say 80% of the time I would have to feed crew because I'm still breastfeeding. So it would be crew starts crying. He wakes up sometime between 6 AM and 7 30 AM. I have to feed him. And then I take him downstairs and I immediately go in the ice bath. One of the rules that I had was absolutely no social media, even while I'm feeding crew and no coffee. 
or food before you get in the ice bath. So if I wanted coffee and I wanted to scroll, I had to do the ice bath first. So it was like that habit stacking idea. And I, I'm really proud of myself that I completely stuck to that, especially during breastfeeding because breastfeeding, you know, it's moms, you know, like it's very easy to scroll and what else are you going to do? You kind of like look at your phone or whatever. Um, I stuck to it completely and I never had a, even a single sip of coffee. I shouldn't say never. There were a few days where I ended up doing it the ice bath later, like on Christmas and on a day where we had guests in town who wanted to do it with me. Um, but those were my habit stacking. My plan was I would make my coffee, take it out there with me, put it in the sauna. And when I was done, I could get out, dry off, get in the sauna and sip my coffee until I was stopped shivering basically. Um, so let's talk about how this kind of went for me. So I told Julian I was going to do it. I hated it so much. Like I can't even explain or put into words how much I hated being in there. Um, I had a hard time calming myself down, I, you know, and, and it wasn't like a panicky sort of feeling. I just didn't like that type of discomfort. I mean, I've had three natural births so I can deal with it. I just wanted to avoid it at all costs if possible. Um, so the first few nights, that I did it knowing that I was going to do it first thing in the morning, right when I woke up, I had like unnecessary amounts of anxiety. I was, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. Like I would be like, I don't want to do this. Why did I tell Julian I was going to do this? Why did I commit to doing this? I don't have to do this. Like all of the like bargaining with yourself that happens. I've had three natural childbirths. I've competed at the CrossFit games multiple times. I do really, really hard fitness. Why? Do, I don't need to prove anything. I don't need to do this to myself. Like it's going to be too cold tomorrow. Tomorrow it's going to be below freezing. It's going to be snowing outside. It's all of this stuff was, would go through my head the first few nights to the point where I couldn't even fall asleep. And I was dreading waking up in the morning. The, um, after a few days in now, when I started, it wasn't that cold. So when I chose this, it's kind of like when we choose to start working out or when we choose to start eating better, usually people, they make these decisions in a moment where life is a little bit more peaceful or the circumstances are a little bit more easy. Well, about two or three days in, it started getting real cold outside and it was much colder than it was the first day that I chose to do it. Um, so that was making it more difficult. That was making it easier for me to be like, oh, like this is different now. Now it's icy. It's dark outside at 7.30 in the morning still. Like maybe you should do it later. All of these things. On I think day three or day four, and Julian saw this happen and he can attest to this one. I was walking out and I was in my slippers because I would go out in my slippers with like the shorts that I had slept in with a hoodie on and a beanie on my head and I would throw my towel and my sweats in the sauna and take my little slippers off. Anyways, I had gone out and I realized that I had forgotten, I don't know, my towel or something. So I ran back inside, it was really cold. And then I ran because I'm running because it's so cold just even in the air outside that I'm just like, I gotta get this over with, right? And I'm, and I'm like jogging, like slowly jogging back out. And I go down the steps to go to where the ice bath is. And I, I mean, I apologize for the vulgarities here, but there's no other way to explain it. I ate shit so hard, <laughs> like fully like cartoonish feet slipped out from under me, landed on my back. And Julian saw the whole thing happen. Cause the first like week he would watch me do this just to see like, is she really going to get in? It's so cold. And I know how much she hates this. So he sees me fall. I land on my back. Like, I don't even know if I caught myself with my hand or whatever. And I'm just like in my PJs, it's dark, it's icy, it's cold. And he like opens the door. He's like, are you okay? And he told me after that, that he was pretty sure that I was going to be like, I'm not doing this right now and come back in and be cranky about it and, and quit right then and there. I was like, yeah, wow, I'm fine. I, I stood up, walked over, took my slippers off, threw my towel in the sauna and got in the, and got in the ice. I couldn't take the time to process what had just happened. I couldn't take the time to feel bad for myself. I couldn't take the time to even think about that this could be an out for me, at least for today. Nope. I knew I needed to stand up and go get this over with and get out of the cold and, and get through it. 
So the first, like, I would say week or so, um, when I was in, in the water to remind myself why I was there. And I'm, I'm like a person who has to attach meaning to everything, like maybe more than is good sometimes. Um, a lot of the times it was just about commitment. And I would just repeat the word commitment. Like you can be committed to something that that's hard. You can, and, and that might seem weird for me because, well, it's like, yeah, obviously you've done all this stuff with competing and you, you had this career and this business and you're, you know, you're a mom of these, like, of course you can do stuff that's hard, but all of those things are now normal to me. And, um, this was something that was uncomfortable in a different way and that I didn't have to do that I was choosing to do, I have to take care of my kids. I mean, I guess I don't have to, but you, you know what I mean? The business is happening. We have all these employees, we have all these members. I have to keep working, um, to an extent. And fitness is just so part of who I am now that it's not, it, it is hard and uncomfortable every time I do it, but it's second nature. It's just there for me now. So this was something that I didn't need to do that was uncomfortable for me that definitely most people in my life would think is over the top and weird. And so I would just breathe and say commitment. And a, a lot of times during those times, I would think about how my, my boys are young now and there's definitely some challenges that we have with them, whether they're, you know, going through the toddler phase of being, you know, throwing tantrums and things like that, or they don't sleep or they're, te you know, banner or crew is teething or whatever. There are challenging times, but I know as they get older, um, and they become teenagers and things like that, that the challenges are different. And it's gonna be very much more, right now I feel like a lot of the challenges with them are physical, like we're physically exhausted. Um, but when they get older, there might be challenges where I need to stay in it mentally with them and emotionally with them to be there for them in a way that um, I can't even probably wrap my head around right now. And so not losing that ability to control my thoughts and my emotions the way that I needed to in the ice bath. So it was kind of like a, I was thinking about them a lot and I was thinking about staying committed. And sometimes I would think about our staff here or the members at street parking and staying committed to the mission and the vision that we have for street parking and just using this moment of not letting the ice win to remind myself that I'm not gonna let obstacles that come up in my own life win ever. Um, so the first like week, it was just this, this I would just repeat the word commitment, commitment, commitment as I was in there in my head, or maybe even sometimes out loud. As I kept, um, as I got into it about a week, maybe even a little bit sooner, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not completely clear. Um, my why started to shift a little bit, or maybe I added a little bit to it. And what I realized with these nights of anxiety and how much I didn't want to do it and how even as I was like perched on the side of the, of the, of the barrel about to do it, I wanted to get out of it. I didn't want to do it. Um, it dawned on me in those moments that this is how a lot of the street parking members feel about just doing the workouts. They don't want to do it. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. It's different. They don't have, you know, a big cheering section or um, they hate it. They hate exercise. A lot of people legitimately hate it. And, but they know that they, that it's important. They know that it can be, that it's good for them. And they want so much to overcome those feelings. And so at that point, when I, when I started thinking about our members in that way, my why became, I want to feel what that feels like for them in the struggle that they have just to get their daily fitness in. And I want to put myself in that position because fitness isn't that for me anymore. But I think it's important to know how that feels for people and in a physically, a physically uncomfortable way, like a physical discomfort that I'm choosing like fitness where I don't have to do it. No one's going to give me a hard time if I stop. It's only me that it impacts. And ultimately it's only me that I'm accountable to. So I really started for the next little while, I would think about the members and think about how there are people at home right now, as I'm about to get into this ice, who are about to work out, or who are thinking about working out, who are trying to talk themselves into it, or maybe talking themselves out of it. And I want to put myself in their shoes for this next month. 
in my little notes here that I prepped for this podcast, I wrote um, that by day five, I had just accepted a few things. I had accepted that I'm that it sucks. I had accepted that it's going to be d- uncomfortable. I had accepted that um, I'm probably never going to want to do it. And while I'm in it, I'm going to want to get out the entire time. But I had also accepted by day five, and I wrote day five sp- specifically because I do remember this, I had accepted that I was going to do it no matter what. There was nothing that was going to stop me from doing it. I, I had already done the falling thing. It had already gotten really, really cold. I had been doing it in the dark. So I had accepted all of these things that I don't like about it. But the anxiety at night beforehand of like, I don't want to do this was gone because it just, it was just going to happen. So there was no point in stressing about it anymore. I was just going to do it no matter what. And so stay up all night and worry about it if you want or go to sleep because either way you're going to wake up in the morning and you are going to do this thing. Um, there was one morning where I had to do it at like five o'clock or something like that. And yeah, I think it was five in the morning, uh, because Knox and I were going to go do this charity event, um, with, um, shop with a cop. It was like this Christmas thing for underprivileged kids to go shop with police officers and street parking was supporting it. And so I was going to take Knox to help these kids shop and wrap their presents. We had to be at this Walmart that was like 30 minutes away from our house at six in the morning. I could have definitely done it later. Um, and there were a few days where I did do it like two days where I did do it later. But that day I was like, no, no, I need to keep this because it was still pretty early on. I need to keep this going. And I had talked to Julian and Julian was very supportive throughout the whole thing. There were definitely a couple of days that he did it with me, but he was very supportive throughout the whole thing, which I know um, is such a blessing for any situation like this. But I did it at five in the morning one day. And again, I am not... if. If I didn't have children and I didn't have to be somewhere, if you just let me sleep without an alarm clock, I'm in the group of people that would sleep until, I would say minimum 8.30, probably nine. And I'm embarrassed to say this, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if if many days my body wanted to stay asleep till 10 o'clock in the morning. That's how I've been my whole life. I'm a night person and I'll sleep. I'm a, I love sleep. I'm not a napper, but nighttime sleep. I mean, I can go 10, 11 plus hours. So I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning to do it at 5 a.m. one day. And it, it was just, I had to. I had accepted. I had made the decision. It was what I, it was now a part of what I was doing. Like there wasn't oh, well, maybe I don't have to do it. That The question was gone. And I think the sooner that we can find that about any habit that we're trying to create, the sooner we can just accept, I'm just, I'm doing this now. This is just what I'm doing. And the people around us, and I don't mean everybody, but Julian knew like, this is just what I'm doing. Um, they start to accept it as well. A couple of things that really helped me through this and again, this is like, I'm, I'm using the ice bath as an example, but it's as a, as a um, thought, thought experiment around anything that you might um, be trying to change or do. Um, but specifically for this, I, in the morning, I never looked at what the outside temperature was before I would go out. And I would never, definitely never, ever, ever look at what the temp, because we have like a little thermometer in the water. I would never look at the water temperature <laughs> before I got in. I always looked at it afterwards, both of those things, but I would never look at it before because why? Why would you do that to yourself? Like, is it going to make a difference to know that the water's only 38 degrees? versus yesterday it was 44 degrees. And so now before you're even in it, you know how much worse it's going to be. Like, why would you do that to yourself? You're going to get in it anyway. And so, you know, this is one of the things where with street parking members, a lot of the times I know people like to pre-plan their workouts and things like that. And I think there's benefit to it, but there's also benefit to a season where you're like, I'm not going to look at what the workout is. I'm going to roll into my garage or into my living room and it's Tuesday morning. I'm going to do whatever Tuesday's workout says. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to over strategize it. I'm not going to worry about that. It has burpees and I hate burpees, whatever it says I'm going to do. And that's one of the benefits that I think, you know, you have, if you're a member of like a CrossFit gym or something like that, because you go in and you have to do whatever is on the board, um, where we give you so many options and we allow you to find what you love. 
Um, I think that there's a time and a place to not to to specifically either choose something that you definitely don't want to do and just force yourself to do it. So maybe you look at the week of workouts and you're like, okay, that's the one that I not necessarily the one that sounds the least fun, but this is the one that I don't want to do the most because I know I'm going to be the bad at it or I there has movements that are difficult or uncomfortable for me. That's probably the most important workout for you to do that week, to be honest, or to just be like, I'm not going to look at the workouts in advance. I'm going to open it right before I do it and do whatever it says. You know, none of them are ever going to be like super long or anything like that. So it should be manageable to do that for at least a season. Something else that I would do that really helped me is, um, the first, so, so my commitment was to getting in for two minutes, um, every day. And I was, I would put my little phone timer on there and I would get in and I would just wait for, for two minutes. Well, I'm a counter. Like when I run, I count my, my steps and things like that. I've just, I've always been that way. So I was counting my breaths. And what I noticed in the first few days is that two minutes was roughly 40 breaths. The first 10, 15, even 20, depending on how cold it is, breaths go by pretty fast. And then once you get control of your breathing, they go by slower. And so the first two or three days, I noticed that 40 breaths was roughly two minutes. So I had committed instead of two minutes, I'm always going to do 40 breaths. And so it gave me something to count and something to focus on as I was in there. And the more control of my breath that I got, some days I have been in there. I think yesterday I was in for four minutes and some days it still was only two minutes. Some days it was two and a half, three, three and a half, but it was always those 40 breaths and it gave me something to count. Um, some days, so there was some, there was some fitness or there was some ice bath freedom happening and there was some more than nothing, nothing happening sometimes. So, um, if you put your hands in the ice, it's much colder than if you leave your hands out. And that's something that I realized very early on. Some days I wouldn't put my hands in at all. Like I just couldn't, it, it, like it got to be, there was a day I I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but there was a day where it was 18 degrees outside when I was in this bath and the water was 35 degrees. And I can't remember if I ended up putting my hands in for part of the time that day, but at what the point is that there were some days where like, I did get really crappy sleep the night before I was cranky. I had some other stuff that I was stressed out about. My commitment was to getting in every day and to lasting for two minutes, not to not any, any, there was nothing further than that. So, but what I would recognize is, is there was always, and still even this morning when I did it, I didn't, I, there's this moment of, I don't want to do this. You get in for the first 30 seconds. It's really terrible. And then you have this moment of, you know what? I'm, I'm fine today. I can put my hands in and you have to recognize now, of course, I still didn't want to put my hands in. Like why make it more uncomfortable than it needs to be? Well, because today I can, I can handle that and I can manage it. And it's very similar to our fitness, right? Where it's like my commitment to fitness is just to show up and do the workout. Now, if one round in, I'm like, I feel pretty good today. I actually think I can add weight to my bar, or I think I can try to do this unbroken, or I think I can push the run faster. And some days it's like, nope, I'm just uh, all I have. What it takes though, is a, an honesty with yourself to push yourself on the days that you can. And so, um, again, sometimes I would end up, I could have gotten out at two minutes, but I would do the 40 breaths. And sometimes again, like I said, it would take me to four minutes. Sometimes I would put my hands in the entire time. Sometimes the hands would never go in. Sometimes I would, as I was going, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to make myself put my hands in for the last 10 breaths or whatever. I allowed myself to push myself to as, as uncomfortable as I was able to, or willing to get that day with the commitment to just being, to get in. Um, there was only one day that I didn't go in for two minutes and it was actually, yes, two days ago, two days ago, um, as, as of the time of this recording on Christmas night, I started feeling like I was getting sick. Um, I thought I was just sore from the 12 days of Christmas workout. Turns out I started getting a fever. I was like cold when I was in the shower, but then hot when I was like, you know, out of the, it was just, I was, I was sweating. I was sore. I, my body ached and hurt. My joints ached. I had a really bad headache. I started getting a sore throat. And there was this moment again, where 
I had every excuse in the world not to get in the next morning. And maybe, actually, probably some of them were very legitimate. But I had come so far and had overcome so much of, like, the discomfort and the, and had, you know, gone through these, like, waves of emotion that I was like, I have to keep, I have to keep it. But I didn't go in for two minutes um, the day after Christmas. I got in. I stayed in for about 20 seconds and got out just to show up. And that was probably the, like the most more than nothing. And and it was tough because afterwards I was like, oh, I failed. Like I didn't do good enough. And I had to remind myself like, no, your commitment was to getting in. And you did that and you kept it. Um, I started inspiring, uh, you know, some, some people around me to want to come do it with me. Like DH, I mentioned, okay, well, let me go back to the super cold days. So a, a few days before Christmas, it got really cold and it was snowing and the ice barrel grew a, um, sheet, uh, like a top sheet of ice that was like an inch or so thick that required us for like three days to break it open in order to get in. And um, there was snow on the ground. It was 18 degrees outside one morning. I think one morning it was like 20 and and an- another morning it was like in the er- it was in the low 20s as well and i had to go out there with an ice pick and break open the ice and get in this was another opportunity to be like this is okay like this is too much like if there's a sh- if there's a layer of ice it's probably too much um but I was committed to doing it. And actually those days were some of the most fun and the days that I was most proud of um, because it's like I had come so far at that point. If the sheet of ice would have been there on December 2nd, I don't know that I could have continued. I don't know that I would have been breaking the ice on day two of this, but this was like day whatever, 22 or something like that in. And I was like, look at me out here. Like I'm breaking the ice in the dark, in the snow to get into this thing where two months ago, like I was avoiding this at all costs and I haven't even had my coffee and I haven't even, you know, like who, who is this person? Like those days made me realize how far I had come and I was super grateful for those. But yeah, I started inspiring people around me. Like I said, DH would come. Um, He's one of our coaches here. He would come. Julian, he gets FOMO. Anytime anyone is doing something really challenging or hard or that looks like it sucks, he immediately wants to be a part of it. So he ended up doing it with me and, and being inspired to do it. And he was so proud of me. It was so funny. I told him that he was more, at, he seemed more proud of me for this ice thing than he had been through all three of my pregnancies, which is not true, but he was just very vocal about it. And, um, I think it was because it was something that he could relate to because it is, he enjoys it and he had been doing it a lot, but still, even for him, I'm like, if you're watching the video, I'm looking at him because he's like outside the window of this office right now, but it's still really uncomfortable, you know, but it gave us this like bonding thing, which was great. So fitness again, bringing it back to this is, this episode is not about the ice really. You will inspire people around you. Like don't attach your doing it to somebody else. Like accountability partners and like getting a buddy to do it with you can be very, very helpful. But at the end of the day, if that person drops off, that shouldn't affect you at all. But what you will notice is even if you're like, go to your spouse, go to your best friend, go to your sister, your coworkers, whatever. And you say, Hey, I'm doing this thing. And just tell them that you're doing it and then actually follow through and do it somebody will be inspired by that. And you'll be surprised at how they come around to like, Hey, like I'll I'll do it with you today. Or, or can I come too? you know? And it's like, sure. Again, never attaching whether you're going to continue or not to whether they actually latch onto it, but you do, you inspire people around you by saying you're going to do something that's really hard, allowing them to see how much you're struggling with it, being honest about how much you're struggling with it, and then continuing to move forward. It's inspiring to people. Um, on Christmas, I had a, I had the why changed again, or what I was thinking about when I was in the ice changed again. We, I didn't do it before we opened the presents because the boys would have lost their minds. Okay, so I was like, I'll do it. We'll open the presents and I'll do it before I eat breakfast still. So we had just had this beautiful, 
beautiful morning where our boys were so happy. They were getting along. Julian's mom was there. They were opening their presents and laughing in our home with our Christmas tree and their cute PJs and everything. It was just like the perfect like Christmas morning that every family hopes for. And I'm in the ice and I'm so uncomfortable and I still hate it so much. And I just had this moment of like, you are so lucky or so blessed. Like what you just witnessed in there, if you can feel that gratitude when you're this uncomfortable, because life is always gonna be uncomfortable. There are always gonna be obstacles. There are always gonna be challenges. But if you can hold on to that gratitude that you have for what you just got to experience with your family and still, still feel that in a state where you're doing something that you absolutely don't like and it's very physically uncomfortable and everything in your mind is telling you how terrible this thing is, but really what you've chosen to focus on is how amazing your life is and how lucky you are to have everything that you have. Um, I thought that that was a really cool exercise to in an uncomfortable moment, in a moment of anxiety or panic or discomfort, to choose to focus on something that makes you happy and brings you joy and allowing that to be what covered the entire two minutes or however long I was in there that day of remembering that. And so I've, for the last, um, I guess it's only been like three or four days that I've done it since then, but that's what I've done. So, so I think like the next day I was the barrel is outside obviously. So I was like looking at our home and I've had two births in our home and we have so many memories in our home and in our backyard. And I was just looking at our house and our yard and thinking about all the amazing things that have happened in that place and just really feeling grateful for that place while I was in that moment. And I think that you can do that with other uncomfortable situations, whether it's you know, something that's emotionally uncomfortable uh, or physically uncomfortable, like a workout. Maybe it's during your rest periods of a workout where everything in your body is telling you to focus on how much pain that you're in. But really, if you can just pull yourself out of it and think about something in your life that you're grateful for, I think that's a really cool exercise to do. Um, just kind of the last fi few things here before I wrap this up. Uh, I pulled, I have this little box of quotes in my office at home and they're just random quotes. This, the, I think there's like a hundred of them or something like that. And every once in a while, when I think about it, I'll randomly pull one out. They're not in any sort of order or anything like that. And um, the quote that I pulled out, I think it was two days ago, I put it on my Instagram story, it, but it applied to what I've been feeling and, and what I've learned through this experience is it, it said, calm and quietude is not real calm when you can be calm in the midst of activity, this is the true state of nature. Happiness and comfort is not real happiness. When you can be happy in the midst of hardship, then you see the true potential of the mind. And I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the person who um, said this, cause it's, I will butcher it. It's like Huanchu Daurin or something like that. Um, but I love that when you can be happy in the midst of hardship, it's easy to be happy when everything's going your way. It's easy to be happy when you're on vacation in Cabo with a drink in your hand, laying on a lounge chair. And I think what's unfortunate is that people chase that and they think that that's what they, that if, oh, if I could only have the easy route, then my life would be so much better. And I just, as a fitness professional and somebody who's been working in fitness for 20 years, I can tell you with extreme confidence that the people who I have encountered, and it's been a lot of people that I've gotten to train or see work out in some capacity, the people who avoid physical discomfort the most, the people who avoid just discomfort in general the most are not the happiest people. They're the least happy people because we're avoiding the things that can help us to grow. We're avoiding the things that can help us to become a stronger, more resilient um, person. You have to go through that stuff. You have to actively choose to do something that's going to be hard, that's going to be uncomfortable, that's going to be difficult. Now, of course, you don't just choose something that's like, I'm not going to 
go home and like poke myself with needles every single day just because it hurts or something like that. We have the barrel of ice at our house because there are some physical benefits. Um, but the reason that I chose to do it wasn't necessarily for those benefits. It was first, I need to just overcome the, this idea that I hate it before I can even worry about what those physical benefits are. Fitness is that way for many people. Nutrition is that way for many people. Um, and we all have our things. I think this idea of if my life was super comfortable and easy sounds nice on paper, but it's just not true. There have been studies, there have been all sorts of things that have come out that talk about how the climb and the struggle and the, and overcoming obstacles is actually what makes people happy. And so for me, maybe it's because I turned 40 years old this year, or maybe it's because I'm not pregnant <laughs> currently and my baby seems to be sleeping okay. I felt the need to find something that was gonna challenge me again. And after this, I'm sure it'll be something else. And after that, I'm sure it'll be something else. And I try never to take it to an extreme. I'm not somebody who's gonna probably go try to climb, climb Mount Everest or do all the... Or, do stuff that's going to take me away from my family just for the sake of doing it. But there are always, I recognize that there's always room to grow. And I did recognize uh, last month or earlier this month that this was something that gave me a feeling that I wanted to avoid at all costs, this being cold in the water. And this was an opportunity for me to grow as a person, as silly as that might sound by getting in the ice bath. One thing that I, I've said a lot as a coach and as a trainer also, when you're thinking about, because what I want to challenge you guys to do is to, as you head into 2023, keep this in mind, pay attention to the things that you want to avoid, pay attention to the things that, that you're trying to do that give you anxiety and you want to quit every single time, pay attention to that feeling. And instead of allowing that feeling to win, lean into it completely and just make that commitment, own that you're not going to like it, own that it's going to be hard own that you might never like it, but commit to doing it anyway. If it's something obviously that, that is going to bring a benefit to your life and that can help you grow as a person. Um, and what, back to one of the things that I've said as a, as a coach for a very long time is there's a difference between discomfort and pain. I'm not in pain when I'm in the ice. If I stayed in too long, then it would probably turn into pain and I'd have hypothermia and start, you know, my limbs would start freezing or whatever. But I'm not in pain. It's very uncomfortable. And I think discomfort is so valuable. So we would never ask you guys, and I would never encourage you guys to do something that's physically painful. Like you, I wouldn't want you to choose like, I'm going to do 52 week endurance with running, even though I have terrible knees and every single day for the, you know, for the rest of the year that I'm trying to do 52 week endurance, my knees are going to hurt. But Miranda said like, I should overcome. No, 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 no. Like I'm not asking you to do something that would cause you pain. And you have, you have to be aware of, is this just uncomfortable? and I don't like it, or is it actually causing me pain? But I do want you guys to find something, and it might not be something that lasts the whole year. Maybe like for me, it's something that you just do for a month and then kind of go from there, but find something that you're avoiding right now, that you want to avoid, that you know you don't like, that you know is a struggle for you. Habit, stack it a little bit. Figure out when you're gonna do it and how you're gonna do it and, and some things that it will help you stay accountable to it, like, my not having coffee or scrolling social media until after I've completed it that day, whatever that might be for you and just commit to it. Accept that you that you don't like it at first and that's okay. And just say, it's okay. I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. Um, and finally, you guys just know that, uh, we're here to support you and, uh, there's so much growth that can happen from this. And we're going to encourage you to do some hard things and we know that you can do it and there it's different for everybody. And so, um, I just wanted to share this story with you. Oh, the last thing that I did want to share is, so it's December 28th as we're recording this right now. And I shared in the beginning of the month, I didn't want to do it at all ever. I still don't want to do it as I'm about to get in every day. I'm like, oh, why am I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like as I'm perched on the side, I don't want to do this. There has not been a single day where I've regretted getting into that ice. Not one time where I've been like, I wish I wouldn't have done that today. And as we're getting closer, I told Julian the other day, like, well, now it's kind of my thing. Like I kind of, it's, I think I'm just going to keep doing it. And isn't that interesting? I still don't necessarily want to do it right before I'm about to do it. It's still very uncomfortable every single time that I do it. But 
I've always felt better afterwards. I've never regretted it. I've overcome so much and realized so much. And it's just a silly little ice bath. And now I want to continue doing it, even though all those things are still true. So you will find that if you just commit to it, you will find that you might not find that it's ever super enjoyable, but you will find that like, well, now it's just kind of part of my day. And I hope that you guys can find that those of you that have struggled with fitness or nutrition or whatever in 2023, I hope that this little story and the way that you can think about things, um, can be different for you this year. And we're here to help you. Hope you guys have a great, uh, rest of 2022 and, uh, head into 2023 strong. We'll see you there.